week is brought to you by Combat Flip Flops. Bad for running and even worse for fighting, Combat Flip Flops are your ticket to the unarmed forces by providing you with the military-inspired quality footwear for men and women. Be sure to enter the code UNITY at checkout to help support the podcast. And in support of women in developing countries, head over to CombatFlipFlops.com and become part of their unarmed forces. Brought to you by Daisy May Hat Co., the custom hat company based in Nashville, Tennessee. They make custom one-of-a-kind hats from wide-brimmed fedoras to cowboy hats. All of their hats are 100% beaver felt, and it's the highest quality hat you can get. They also have the coolest shirts ever. You can use the code BRASS at checkout for 15% off your entire order. Go and check out daisymayhats.com. Embrace the fever. Live the dream. And brought to you by GFDA. Good fucking design advice. The voice in your head and the foot up your ass. GFDA makes prints, drinkware, and apparel for people who want to do their fucking best. Go and use the code UNITY and get 10% off now on anything on their site, including our collaborative product, Fucking Help Somebody. So I'm not going to pretend like my accent doesn't exist, but I'm going to try. Because Sav- Savannah, Savannah. Lee is here. Savannah. Yeah. So listen to me, woman. I was driving in the car and I was saying it after the show and I was going, Sav- I was trying. I was like just, you know, talking out loud to see how conversation was in my accent. And I'm like, oh my God, you're right. I have an accent. You do. You have a strong Canadian accent. <laughs> you have a strong, strong Canadian. Canada is strong within you. Yes. Oh no. Well, I prefer Canada not be strong anywhere near me right now, but here we oh, are. Yeah, anyway. yeah, yeah. yeah um welcome back to the show we did this once and we decided it would be better to do it again i think it's always good to be honest and upfront you know i i am one of those people who is pretty outspoken but i always want people to have a takeaway and i think we need to focus on the takeaway with you and i think you are a a really smart 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 individual with plenty of education in poli sci, as well as in fitness, as in mental health, as in advocacy work. And I think we should focus wholeheartedly on that. So why don't you do me a favor, Savannah, <laughs> and tell everyone and tell everyone who you are and why you're so freaking incredible. Oh, well, thank you. Well, isn't it obvious? No, <laughs> but, um, for, the, just, for the people who are just listening and yeah. not watching, make it obvious. Well, uh, just to piggyback off of what you said, thank you for receiving my desire to redo this, give it another shot um, so well and um, get on top of it because that's actually kind of a new skill that I've been practicing in, especially in 2022 is kind of standing up for myself and just saying, saying like how I feel and, 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 you know, not thinking so much about how it's going to come off, but like, you know, just at least asking, there's no harm in, in trying. So I thank you for that. No, there's um, not. And but, I think that's amazing, by the way. Congratulations yeah. on that. Inserting boundaries is like one of the things we preach a lot. And I'm proud of you for doing that. Thank you. I've done so many things that I was like, mm, I don't really, uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure if I want to put my name on that. So uh, thank you. I, I have a good feeling about this one. But um, hello, everyone. My name is Savannah Lynx. And I am a singer in Las Vegas. I've been singing out here professionally for the last two and a half, three years. I think I've been saying two and a half years for like, it, like way too long, like for two years. So I, I think it's maybe three now. I'm not sure, but um, it's it's been a beautiful life being a performer and doing what I always dreamed of doing, but didn't have any idea how to go about doing it until I finally put one foot in front of the other and opened that door. So I do that and I'm a former fitness competitor, uh, fitness model. So health and lifestyle is definitely a part of who I am and what makes me me. And I just think I have an orthodox approach to everything. I just do it my way or the highway, babe, you know? Savannah Lane all day. <laughs> you do in like every way too, from the moment I've known you to the to now, I'm telling you, yeah. it's very evident <laughs> that you are my way or the highway type of woman. And I think that's brilliant because we struggle to give um, we struggle struggle to give people voices nowadays. People want to shut people down, and I think it's beautiful that you assert your voice in a very um, positive, healthy, productive way, rather than a negative and and um, just really damaging way. I mean, you have a voice, you have a big platform, you you're known all over. I had a 
a guest on my show that's coming out, uh, I think on Friday, actually, Chase. And uh, we were chatting about you. You've been on his Ever Forward podcast as well. And, yep. you know, he was like, she's just so positive and she's radiant in the way that she speaks about life. And Aww. I think that's that's true. Um, but I wanted to kind of pull apart your life a little bit and yeah. talk a little bit about your beginning because people do see themselves in others when they're listening to shows or watching shows. And I mean, there was a dirty joke there somewhere, but I'll digress. The point is, that's, that's <laughs> <laughs> I love that, you know, right where I was going. Listen, I'll skirt some topics, but hey, I, will sex not sells, change. Man. Sex sells. I don't have an issue with that. <laughs> uh, hey, and I know. And I'm fine with that as well. I think we're all, I think we're all who decided to watch more than fine with that. Um, <laughs> I don't know. When you, when you had your last outfit on and the photo you posted in the story you posted, I'm like, that was her dressed down outfit. Yeah. And um, that was her dressed down outfit. And that was like the, the most hard I go. <laughs> like the most hard I've ever gone. And she's like, this is my dress down outfit. I'm like, when okay. we met in Vegas, you told me that you were going to wear some like heinous pantsuit until your husband was like, honey, yeah. you're not wearing that. This no, is I'm not kidding. Video. I've told that story. I've told that story several times. Like I told it while I was there because when I showed up, I'll, I'll kind of, I'll go over it. Um, so you understand human beings. I went to shot show this year and that's where I met Savannah. And it was so lovely because it was very coincidental and it was very, um, just of the world. And I got an opportunity to go sit down and have drinks, um, at the Delilah. I feel like I have to say it like the Delilah. Like I feel like it's a necessary, like my whole body is like the Delilah. Like it's I have this swanky thing. place. Yeah. You and, could call uh, me Savannah in Delilah. Uh, <laughs> I think see, that's the I, only place that I'll, I'll accept that. <laughs> I know my accent is atrocious. I apologize. But I got the opportunity with Dean Stott to go meet um, with Lippy, who is a co-owner of Howler Head Whiskey and have um, some whiskey. And he pointed out while we were standing there because your music was beautiful and you were performing and he goes, do you hear that? And I said, yes. And he goes, that's Savannah. She's gorgeous and she's beautiful and you'll meet her after if you stay. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And then he's like, do you have a dress like that? And I'm like, yes, but I don't look like it in that. Oh, so, that's a lie. That's a lie. But <laughs> uh, let's, let's please be honest with ourselves right now. So you, you finished and then we chatted and I got to sit and meet with you and we kind of hit it off right off the bat. But I tell everyone, like I was wearing a pantsuit, like out of the TV show suits. Like that's what I was going to go to Vegas in. But my husband made it very clear that I looked like I was there for other reasons and that I needed to be there for the reasons I was there for. Um, that's like the correct term to put Right. With all of that. And right. so I did. And I, sh and I came correct. I, when you met me, I was wearing a see-through top and leather pants and gold boots. So I mean, and the tattoo sleeve and you know, you, you definitely looked awesome. You were perfect. Well, well, thank you. But it's only because you could not sit down because you were wearing something so tight. Yeah. And you know, you said before people know me from all over. It's really funny how many people I know who have seen me on stage performing in Vegas and that I run into during the daytime or something and they don't recognize me because I'm not wearing a gown. Like you think the other day was my like dress down look like I'm always in formal wear, like evening wear attire. And so people don't recognize me when I'm going to the gym or something, It's which is pretty funny. But, I mean, that's uh, kind of perfect too for your life. I mean, as you grow and become this massive singer that we know you already are, I mean, you performed at the weekends the weekend's birthday. And that was completely yeah. serendipitous. And it's, yeah. and it's not even like you tried, you were just killing it, doing your job. And you're that incredible that somebody picked you out. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That was, that was, a that's, that's kind of the combination of being prepared and fate. You know what I mean? An opportunity that you don't even know is on the horizon is there for you. And you're just doing, doing your best throughout and something always kinds of kind of lands in your favor when I think you, uh, you're just always trying, you know, mm -hmm. even if you don't really want to like always do your best. Somebody said that to me, actually a patron. It was when I first started performing, I was at Rose rabbit lie at the cosmopolitan and he, uh, he and I got on, got on very well from the start. And he said to me, Savannah, what's going on? There's only, and I was like, well, there's only like, 
30 people in here. It's really not like a, a pop in night. Like, I don't know, it's something like, I'm just kind of like going through the motions. He goes, you step on that stage and you give it a hundred percent, no matter how many people are in the room or how important they are. They deserve a show just like all the people who do when, when it's a quote unquote great night. And that kind of stuck with me until now. Like there's no reason I shouldn't be doing my best regardless of who's in the audience or, or how I feel the night is, you know what I mean? And also you never know who's there, um, who can, who can maybe change your life or, but even just for myself, I always like to do my best um, kind of because of what he said, it really resonated with me. I know it's special, but you didn't start out. I mean, I mean, you, you were born and you were gorgeous, but you didn't start out the way, you know, you are now you've kind of grown and brought yourself to this path, but I want to touch base a little bit. Um, cause you said something on the last episode that was really, was really important to me and it really hit. And I think it really mattered. You, you spoke of your dad and you spoke of how you grew up and you, and what that was like for you. And I would love if you'd be willing to, to run through that and, and how you kind of got to where you are now. Yeah. Um, so when, when I was eight and it, it's kind of a beautiful story, how everything has brought me back to Vegas and to singing, even when I tried to deny myself of what my heart wanted most, uh, because I was afraid of it as, as we sometimes are. But when I was eight, my, um, the, basically my, family passed away, everybody except my mother. My my father got very sick and he he passed away. And then my grandparents who lived with us passed. And then we were on the way to Christmas Eve church and we ran over the dog, you know? So, and my, I'm an only child, my mom's an only child. And so it was my dad. So, you know, we were a very small nuclear family and, and we were pretty much decimated in a very short amount of time. And because of all of that, trauma and shift and change we needed something to do and we had family friends down south who were still very close with and they said you got to do something with savannah because at the time i was just you know a i wasn't involved in sports i wasn't really excited about any particular subject in school so they do what southern people in america do and they entered me in a pageant and uh, this pageant, you know, just as an aside, it wasn't like a toddler's and tiaras pageant. It's not like the big eyelashes like I have on now and the, you know, the crazy makeup and everything. Um, it was a Christian based uh, scholarship organization and you needed a talent. That was basically the draw of it. You know, talent, 50 percent of the score was talent and then 25 uh, percent interview and 25 percent um I don't know, modeling or whatever. And so I didn't have a talent at the time. And the easiest thing, because I couldn't dance or play an instrument was to get a karaoke track to sing to. And I sang Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend at the Palace Station, which is here in Vegas. That was the first time I ever came to Vegas. And that was the first time I ever sang. And uh, it's funny because that was my audition song. Uh, when I decided to take a shot at being a professional singer here in Vegas. So isn't that wild that yeah. a Christian organization takes people to Las Vegas? Children, yes, little girls. Yeah. It, like little it, tiny it, humans. You know, it is. And just to touch on that, because I totally get it. And from the outside looking in, it looks totally ridiculous. I just kind of go It was the that. best thing that ever happened to me. And this organization, you know, I, uh, so I won the international title, which is a huge honor. Like I tried for maybe 10 years to win. The competition oh, is wow. steep. The competition is steep. And, and all of the, you know, former contestants, I, I see they're in, you know, the American ballet company, they're, they're, they're traveling all over the world as, as professionals. They're, they're incredible women. And this organization really does um, create that in them from such a young age. But um, the pageant was awesome. And I just went to the, the girl when I won the teen division, um, her name is Madison. She just got married here in Vegas. And I, I just went to her wedding about a month ago. And so we're all still close. We're all still close. We all still, you know, have such fond memories of that time in our lives. And it's, it's not what people think. Some of them are. But, but the ones, there are a lot of organizations that, that are not the stereotypical pageant experience. But I think that's incredible to acknowledge too, and really highlight because a lot of people nowadays, um, you know, they, 
at least in my community up here, and I've seen it with ch- kids, there's a lot of people who aren't sure, especially with the COVID kids, what to do with their kids, how to put them in sports, what to put them in, activities to do. And there's, it's great when you hear somebody who's had a really positive experience with something that's non-traditional, maybe for Canadians or even some Americans, and you've you've not only seen how it's helped better you and, and put you on a path, but it gave you it gave you something to strive for. It gave you a community and it gave you something that you didn't have at the time, which was a, you had a small family, but it gave you this extended family that now you still spend time with. And that's incredible. You're so right about that. It, and I, I, it's funny. I joke with my mom all the time. Like pageants have been so defining in my life that my life currently is a pageant. Think about it. (laughs) Right. Like, interview. This is an interview. And and we practice that in a pageant. I'm on stage in a gown singing every night, um, which is a pageant, you know, and then you schmooze, you do the whole thing. My whole entire existence is a pageant. Um, And I wouldn't have it any other way. I love pageants. I'm so sad that I'm too old to do them anymore. But, uh, and I would never, I would never do like the misses also because I probably won't ever get married. So it's it's just a fond memory that um strangely enough has very much dictated the rest of my life i know but i mean what a great way to do that and what a and what a positive message it brings to individuals who are just trying to find themselves or find a community because we like i said we overlook the importance of community more than ever i think we've we've always had it I think the world has always had open community and and conversation, but we, but with community in particular, with COVID happening, it wiped out the idea of a community and the support systems that come with that. And really the nuanced things about being in a group of people that you feel loved by. Right. I think, I think not only COVID, you have a good point there, but also just that at rapid advance of social media, you know, a, a social community, a, Media, social community online does not suffice for interpersonal reaction face to face. You know, FaceTime, the Zoom is great, but it's not the same energy that we would be getting if we were sit, sitting down with one another. So I think that, um, you know, that, that is important. And I get, I get my fill when I'm working because after that, I'm like, okay, I need to be alone. Yeah. Like I, I really do enjoy being alone. Yeah, no. And that's, well, that's, I mean, that's obvious that you appreciate your lifestyle a certain way and you you're willing to, like you said, have boundaries around that. And most people aren't, and that's quite all right. If anything, it shows others that it's acceptable and and more than okay to say, I need some time, or I just need, you know, on my own, or I just, I'm done with the meet and greets, or I'm done with the interviews. Like it's okay to say that. And there's, there's nothing wrong with that. I think people are quick to to take more on, take more on because they're unsure of how to actually assert themselves. Completely, so. completely. Mm-hmm. And also I've been received because this is actually something I've been working on primarily in the last couple of years. Um, I've been received a lot more um, or a lot better rather because I know myself. People respect when you're able to say, no, I, I'm not available that day or no, it's like, okay, she knows herself, not like, "Mm, well, maybe, maybe. And then you just like ghost them. You know what I mean? That's not a strong assertion of, of your boundaries. It's, it's nice to be honest with yourself and with other people. And, uh, you know, I'm still learning that. So I think every, I think that's, um, I think everybody's learning that. I think as everyone ages and they mature and they change and they have things happen in their lives, it, it obviously directs you down a different path that maybe you didn't realize you were going to, going to be able to you know, have. And for you, you had, you had all of these, you know, really aggressive, traumatic things happen in a short period of time with the loss of your family. But then later on, you, you left and you, and you just, and you just went to college and university and then just fucked off. Yeah, I did. I sure did. <laughs> well, you want to tell everyone? I sure why? did. Yeah, I yeah. Was. So, I uh, yeah. So I was I was Miss New Jersey Teen USA in uh, high school, which was amazing. That was actually that was like my identity growing up. I was you know, and as soon as I I'm, I'm 16 years old, I'm going to do this pageant and I'm going to win it. I'm going to win it. That was all my sights were set on. You know, on unlike my other. Um, 
you know, stu uh, student peers who were focused on college and, and athletics. I was just focused on Miss Teen USA. And that was kind of a jarring experience because after, after I won that, that only lasts a year, it's like, then what? And, and my whole identity was kind of tied to this like teen, sexy, like badass, which I was. And, Obviously, you but, were. But, uh, but, you know, I didn't really know. I was like, oh, shoot. Like, okay, now what? Um, so I went to college. I wanted to go for musical theater. My parents weren't stoked about that. And I also didn't get into NYU. Uh, I had a horrible audition. That was, that was like the first and last one that I ever did. The lady hated me. She hated me hated me off the bat. I knew I didn't get it. I knew I didn't get it. She, there was no, also, um, why is she judging me? She was wearing like mismatched green, olive green socks with an LL Bean pullover, honey. No. So, so um, you're wearing a hoodie and like, Oh, comfiest pants oh no, 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 no. <laughs> this woman was on another, another lamp, another plant room. Anyway. So, um, went to college, um, because I, I, I am, as we discussed, I'm, I'm, I am passionate about political science and, and I love philosophy. I really do. And I majored in poli sci, minored in philosophy. And uh, like I say, I, I pretty much majored in dollar slices of pizza and partying for three years. I, I went off the deep end. I was like not motivated in the morning to go do anything. Why would I do that when I can, you know, just go out and meet people. I'm so excited and buzzing, you know, with all this excitement to be in Manhattan. It's like, the center of the universe and I'm here I'm not going to go to class are you crazy the um, energy is like incredibly palpable in New York it's unlike anything I've ever experienced anywhere else yeah it's incredible and um you know I mean I took full advantage of that but then I was you know not going to class and, and just not doing anything that I should have been doing on this amazing academic scholarship that I got so um enough was enough I, I really lost myself a couple like weird tattoos later um i was like i'm out yeah i have this 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 one this what is, what that? is that what is that that's you know what i keep this one because everyone's like well if you don't like it just take it off i i call it my temporarily permanent tattoo and it's kind of uh analogous to life you know some things are permanent temporarily but I want to be able to remember this place because I, I don't want to ever go back to, to the Savannah that I was when I got it so anyway long story short I uh dropped out of college parents were like we're done with you as they should have been and I just moved to the opposite end of the country so I could be as far away from them as possible so I wouldn't have to hear their bs and they're <laughs> complaining so moved to California and um didn't know what I was going to do. Didn't know singing was really the answer. It was just trying to find my footing. But as I was trying to find my footing, I started running to do it. Which, and I've never been athletic or anything, but um, I would run in the morning and then I got really fit along the way. I got like really fit. And then I was like, oh, I can do fitness competitions. Let me take a stab at that. So um, I entered a ton of them and I won them all and traveled for about five years and was really big into the fitness community. All that before um, I realized, okay, I'm done with the fitness community. Like there's only so many, so many days that I can kill myself at the gym and like treat pasta like the devil before I go insane. So um, I saw an audition flyer online for a show out here in Vegas and they needed a singer and um, I went after it. I did it. And it's changed my life. My life is completely different. I'm a different person. I'm a, I'm a different, every, everything is better. Everything is just better. Let's yeah, think back is. to California. Cause you said something last time that was really interesting to me. You're like, you lived on muscle beach and yeah. that, how do you not be fit? How do you not want to be fit when you look out your window and all you're seeing is people work out every minute of the day? It is a bit intimidating though, because they're, they're serious. And so I, I do understand, like, if you feel like you're, you're so far away from that, you won't even, um, you know, put your foot in to test those waters, which I think is a big problem that a lot of people have when, when attacking the gym, you know what I mean? They make their new year's resolutions like, okay, I'm going to be fit. I'm going to eat healthy this year. Then they go to the gym and sometimes it could be a little daunting. You know, you're seeing all these people who are so much further ahead of, in their fitness journey than you are 
then you're like, what am I doing here? This isn't for me when it can be, you know? Well, and it absolutely can be. And and I think that's uh, important to acknowledge is people, you know, people are on their own journeys and everyone starts at a different point and you're not going to end up being like we said, the rock, if you're, if you're, you know, just starting out, that's going to take some time because remember right. the rock with you in your arms is going to be the, yeah. Of the year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember everything. Um, yeah. but it's, it, it's, it's super important. And it's something you said, and I know I keep pulling it back, but I think it's important because you said some really, really crucial things that I think people would really, really get. And, you know, you, I said, you, you're like, oh, I accidentally got fit. And I'm like, I'm sorry, what? And you're like, no, I stay fit. You stay ready. And that's, and that's important. And that comes from your dad. Yeah, my, my stepdad is, is, is pretty awesome. That comes from both my dad and my mom. My mom is really the one who coined, uh, don't, don't, don't ever have to get ready because you're always staying ready. And that is my mom and she will murder me if she hears this and I don't give her the credit. <laughs> so yeah, thanks for that. But I think, I think that's the thing, just always being ready to take that opportunity. Like with the weekend thing the other day, um, if I wasn't coming to the table with all that I got, then maybe the outcome would have been a lot different. And, you know, there's like the muscle beach fitness competition that I told you about. If I wasn't in a position to, to be ready, I wouldn't have gone for the title of, uh, you know, Miss muscle beach. I, I wouldn't have entered. I wouldn't have been so hungry for that because for me, it's not really about the competition around me. It's more about my competition with myself. You're always shadow boxing. And if I can't beat myself, like what the hell? Like I don't deserve to beat anybody. If I'm not doing a hundred thousand percent with what's in my control, then uh, you know, shame on me. So that's a mentality that so little people have nowadays, and I think it's so important to uh, always be talking about because people, people most of the time, at least in my experience, they want to have that mentality. They just don't know how to develop the tools or the strategies to then implement that mentality into their lives but doesn't everybody really know these tools like like let's like it's really not hard i think everybody just makes it so much more complicated you're at point a you want to go to point b what do you have to do you have to wake up earlier you have to go to the gym you have to eat right Mm -hmm. do it it's really kind of the easiest thing it's it's hard that's what nobody's talking about like, oh, I didn't know I was going to be hungry when I went on this diet. Duh. Like, obviously. Duh. Oh, I didn't know I was going to be unsatisfied by the meals I was eating. Uh, hello. Like, nobody chooses to eat a carrot a day, for, like, because they love it so much. Like, nobody's freaking out over carrots and celery. But this is what you do because you have to make sacrifices. And that's something I've learned really in, in the last couple of years is, like, even the good stuff, everything comes with a cost. Um, my social life is non-existent, which I'm fine with, but, uh, you know, there are moments where I'm like, "Mm," like I miss, I miss like being able to go out to a nice dinner with some friends and like having a couple drinks. And I just don't do that. I just don't do that. That's not part of my life. It's not what makes me great. And I'm always focusing on that marquee, that end point. Like, is this choice when I'm faced with the decision, is this choice that I make going to lead, lead me further? Uh, from my goal or bring me closer to it. Even if it's just like a little tiny thing, you know, is this podcast going to be beneficial to where I want to be? Yes, absolutely. I'll take it. Is staying out and and meeting this person who used to be important in my life, but really isn't anymore. um, And possibly jeopardizing my vocal uh, quality, you know, for tomorrow's show going to lead me to my goal or further from it. Okay. No, I'm not going to do it. That's kind of how, uh, it's like the red light, green light game for me. Mm-hmm. I, I, I th- uh, put it through that pass, uh, that test rather, and I see if it's going to work out. But isn't that so simple, right? You, you may, I love the way you speak of it because I try really hard to, so we do this thing called um, Mental Health Mondays. We do it every Monday yeah. at 9.45 in the morning. And we, we go live on our page and we, we talk to people and we, and I just rant about the simple things, the things that I was ingrained in and the things that you had ingrained in, in your life. And right. you and I sit here and say like, but like, how hard is it to go to point A to point B? I mean, you, 
this is the line. Yeah. To move in that direction. But not not everybody has been taught or had that no quit ingrained in them. And that's something I've had to learn, especially when you, and I don't know what that's like for you, but when you work with other individuals, their work ethic is a different conversation. It makes no sense most of the time for me. Yeah. Yeah. And that's really difficult. So like when I, the reason I always like pry about these things is because it's hmm. seriously, some people have not, they might have the tools. They know that they shouldn't be eating shitty. They know they should be drinking water. They know they should be sleeping and doing X, Y, and Z, but for whatever reason, maybe lack of leadership on their parents' part or not having parents or having just a negative experience as a child, they really do not have the coping mechanisms to get up in the morning when it's really difficult to do and say no to the cheeseburger or say no to the going out with the friends because maybe they feel insecure and that's the way that they that they cope right is they they latch on to people that maybe are unhealthy and they don't they don't have the they don't have the patterns or the um what's that thing my dad used to say it's like they don't we'll say they don't have the balls because that's Obviously not true. Yeah, just say, just say that. I'm from New Jersey. So yeah, they don't, they, don't, the they don't have the balls. They don't got the balls. They don't have them. They don't have the balls. <laughs> Can we talk about Teresa for a second? Yeah, but I'm, wait, yeah. this is, I love, wait, I love yes. what you, where you're going. Okay. So, but that's my point is, so they are not always given, they're not always given these things. And I learned that in Taekwondo when I fought with other people, they're not, some people are not willing to wake up early in the morning. Some people are not willing to say no to the cheeseburger. And it's, like I said, it's not that they don't know how to get there. It's that they have never been given the, um, the permission, in my opinion, to say, I'm important enough to care. I'm important enough to get up early. I'm important enough to say no to things because I live in this body and this meat balloon that walks around matters. Yeah. You know what I mean, I do. I'm not sure if I necessarily subscribe with everything that you said. I think, okay. um, I think, like who teaches any, like, yeah, you can have great leaders, but how many great parents have, have had duds for kids, even oh, though they have lessons. So I think it's more of the onus lies on the, the individual. I think the responsibility of figuring out how to cope, everybody has the same journey. Just some, some people um, take it more seriously than others. Some people, you know, it comes more naturally, but just, that, that's not an excuse. I, I, I don't see that as a, like a valid excuse. Like, you know, it it's might not take, an excuse at all. It, yeah. It might take you longer, but you still, you still are making the wrong choices on a daily basis and you're not doing anything to change that. And, um, you know, I've made, I've made bad decisions and, and I felt like it, I was in an inexorable kind of partying cycle with bad people, bad friends, bad decisions, repeat. And it took a lot of, mental fortitude and, and belief in myself and just a little bit of a leap of faith in so many regards. And, and I think that that's kind of the formula to getting out of any kind of like, Oh, I can't do this. Like, yeah, it's going to be hard. I think people need to be prepared that the road to what they want is going to be difficult. And the it's, it's more of the long-term happiness that comes with it, that you're seeking not the immediate gratification. Right. And so many people in the way our society is, uh, uh, you know, over the past 20, 30 years, it seems like we're, we're immediate. We need immediate gratification. We need immediate results. We need now, 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 now. We can't plan. We can't work, you know, work the road, take the path, do the hard work, be, be the person that has to sacrifice. And that, that is something that I've never understood because that's not the way I was raised, taught or learned life. Um, but it is definitely something that I've tried to be more empathetic to because before my reaction used to be, fuck you, you're lazy, try harder. It's not my problem that you suck. I'll help you not suck. I'll is this a direct tools. quote from me? Are you? Yeah, pretty me? much. Pretty that much. Is... <laughs> but like, am I, are we is not something I'm known for. <laughs> yeah, don't suck. Just, and I am trying to be empathetic because that is like, that is something that I've, like you said, you know, you've asserted, you've worked on your boundaries. I've tried to be less aggressive because apparently I'm intimidating and aggressive to be around. But the thing is, is if you suck, you suck. And I'm going to tell you, but it's not that I'm going to say, Hey, you suck. Bye Felicia. I'm going to say, Hey, you suck, but here's why we can stop sucking and how we can do it. Yeah. Not hard. Yeah. 
yeah so i, yeah. I don't know the, the, I, and at the, men, the mental health aspect i some people do have have serious issues um my my girlfriend who i'm very close with we're having some issues right now because uh she she's kind of in that place she keeps making the same decisions but she's not well you know and so so there is a, there is a very big element of okay this isn't her fault this is some kind of chemical neurological thing going on but there are things that we can do to help it and i i don't have a mental illness so i i can't speak on it for sure but um I too so just ask me any questions you want <laughs> <laughs> what is it? What, what's your mental? Illness? I have so I got medically released from the military with a diagnosis of PTSD and then oh, no way. depressive disorder. Yeah, that's why I'm not in the military anymore. I didn't know that. Yeah, I'm a weird. Look, I'll tell you stuff later. But yeah, so no, I I went through that for ten years of oh, of God. what that's like of not getting out of bed for months wow. and months and yeah, yeah. So mental illness and mental. I think um, people who struggle with mental illness, there there is a there's two, in my opinion, there's, you know, there are obviously these types, but there's types that you can work on and there's types that have to be medicated like schizophrenia yeah. and bipolar. Like that's, yeah. you know, you can still be doing, you, sh you should still be doing the eating, the healthy, the, not the alcohol. You should right, still be right. working out. There's ways to make that life easier for you. Right. And then there's other things that can be worked on. So the DSM is kind of changing it. So it's PTSD and now it's PTS, a post-traumatic syndrome instead of a disorder because it's not a disorder. I didn't have the disorder before I went to Afghanistan. I got it when you do some shady, I mean, some stuff. Right, so right, right, right. It's a, not a disorder because you live with disorders. It's an injury that can be fixed, can be mitigated, can be worked on and oh, can, wow. can get better. Right, yeah. right, 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 right. Oh, that's, that's, that's pretty illuminating. Yeah. And I, I didn't know that about that's you. That's okay. Funny. I know, yeah. but that's because I I've worked on it for 10 years. I've been in therapy every week. I went through 10 different pharmaceutical medications to psychedelics to get better. Right. But, but yeah, work. psychedelics I've heard are, are just doing wonders in, in that field. Um, changing. But I, but I think that that's kind of, kind of the point to wrap it up. It's like you see that goal of, of being in a clear health, health mental health state. Um, the road to it isn't easy but you're willing to do the work. And I think that's, that really is kind of a, an individual thing that nobody can give you or take away from you is, right. am I willing to do it? Even if it's harder for me than everybody else out here, you know, to get to that point and, and you're doing it. You know what I mean? You gotta be willing to sacrifice too. Right. Like you said, mm -hmm. you know, having uh not having like a social life, it's like, okay, well you don't have a social life right now, but like, who, who, who cares? Do what I want. Yeah. Exactly. You're, you're, you're making strides in your life that are only going to yeah. continue to better your life. Yeah. There's, um, we're going to get into, to, 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 into Teresa in a second, but I, there, there's something. And, and I think this was my, my, the thing I was sad about was you spoke so beautifully about something your stepdad talked to you about. And it like made me cry. And I still like, I still get, Oh um, yeah. Hmm. and I just want you to talk about that if you will. Of course, of course. Yeah. When I was, so my, my, my stepfather who is my actual father and, and he adopted me earlier this, no, at the end of last year, which was amazing. He's been in my life since I was, you know, nine, 10 years old. And he really just stepped into the role of father and best friend and confidant. And I always looked up to him so much and I still do. Um, the amount of respect he's, he's the one who taught me what true respect looks like and feels like. And I respect him so much. He was a former Marine sniper in Vietnam and, um, just a hard guy. He, uh, <laughs> yeah, you think he's, uh, yeah, he doesn't listen to music. I, I sang a song, <laughs> I sang a song for him when I was like 12, I think. And I sang this song and I go, dad, did you like it? What'd you think? This? Too many notes. <laughs> Music makes you weak. My, yeah, my, my song had too many notes in it. So um, anyway, I, uh, I think I learned my mental fortitude and my desire to, to be strong mentally, physically, and just sharp because of him. And, and one of the things is that I'll never forget is I was nine years old. I was sitting outside somewhere with him. And I told him, I said, Dad, I'm cold. And he goes, pain is weakness escaping the body. You're not cold. You just think you're cold. 
And I never complained to him after that. And it was always just kind of a challenge for me to see how far I could push myself, see how far I can go to, to hopefully impress him, but also like to prove it. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm hard, like my dad, you know, and, um, it's gotten me far, you know, it's, uh, even though I'm this, you know, former pageant girl kind of singer, singer, glamorous kind of person on the stage. That's really not who I am beneath, beneath the makeup and the 10 pounds of foundation and lip with stick and <laughs> fake eyelashes glued onto my face. But that's what I, I, you know, that that's my point right there. That's why I wanted you to talk about him because it matters how you're raised, of course, but it also matters the lessons that you've chosen to take from him that you didn't have to. Mm. You didn't have to hear him when he said pain is just weakness leaving the body. I mean, we talked about this. That's a David Goggins deal. Like your dad Goggins do you at a yeah. very young age before Goggins yeah. was a thing. Yeah. And most kids could have taken that and been like, dad's being a dick. And uh, yeah. that's not being sympathetic towards my feelings. And it's totally. like, if maybe nowadays, if that happened right now, you would have said that, but you, you chose and you, you saw that for what it was. And you're, for whatever reason, your brain was able to go, that's going to be a moment. That's going to be a thing in my life. And you held on to that. And I talked about this before and I, and this isn't like a, I'm trying to um, come at this from a, like, let me compliment you to the blue in the face, but I think there's something we need to you can do that. Please okay. Feel okay I'm ready. Okay. Ready. Ready. Okay. Cause it's really important. And I, and I listened to our other episode back and I said, you know, there's something in there that uh, I needed to acknowledge again, because you, yes, you are this like tall, like elongated, stretched out, gorgeous woman, but you're a business. And I think people forget that. And I think people are unwilling to look at people as businesses. And maybe that seems harsh and, and like crude, but it's not because you're a walking billboard of yourself and who you are and what you represent. And the work that you put in on yourself, your daily routine, which I'm going to make you go through in a minute, um, is, is excruciating for most people when they think about the idea of getting up the way that you do and living the way you live. But it's so, so, so important, especially now to look at other women who are powerhouses and are unapologetic as fuck about it. And are like, I'm a business. Look at me, everything I wear, I'm a business. And it's okay to be a business because you're a badass business who makes change. And you do it because you work fucking hard. And it's because of things like your dad, your routine, your, your mental fortitude, the effort you put in. What is that like on a daily basis for you? How does, how does your day start? Right. Well, thank you. Thank you for saying that. Um, that's, it's funny the way you word it too, because one of my, my personal phrases like, uh, stay ready. So you don't have to get ready is also, um, you are your own business card, you know? I don't have business cards, but you know who I am because you're looking at it. You, you, you right. get it when you see it, the, the full thing. I don't have to sh bring you to this place to show it. It's, uh, it's right there in your face. So, um, but thank you. Um, I do work, I do work hard and I always feel like I can be working a lot harder. Um, so that is a blessing and a curse, but I think I wouldn't change it because that's what keeps you, keeps you hungry. And I've learned in more recent years to separate myself from people who are like, yeah, but you need to relax. You need to, pre you know, have a, have a day off. Screw you. I'm not where I want to be. And I love the work. I love doing it. There's nothing better to me than, than going to sleep after a really long day where I didn't want to do the things that I did. And I did them expertly. Like that's, that's fulfillment. That's, that's like the crowning jewel of, of what being alive is. If you don't have anything to show for it, then what's the point? Um, so I get up pretty early today. However, I'll be honest with you today. I snoozed my alarm for three hours. I was going to get up at four 45 and I did. Girl, I know it. I know it. I was, it was one of those days, but you know what? I was going to wake up early, super early, four 45, go to the gym by five, um, get that workout in shower, get ready for you. Um, I didn't do it. So that just means it has to be put somewhere else later in the day. So be it. What day is it? Is today Tuesday or Wednesday? Oh, today's Wednesday. Oh yeah, I have a show tonight. Um, so I'll just have to figure it out. You know what I mean? And, and that's the thing. So I, I get up pretty early every day around anywhere from like five to even seven if, if I had like a week of shows. 
7 a.m., wake up, go to the gym, and then I'll come home. I'll make some some food for me, or maybe I'll have it already meal prepped. Um, I eat pretty much like a keto protein, high, high, high fat. I love fat. I, love, I like it like drink butter and all of <laughs> I'm not kidding. And then uh, after that, I'll shoot some content. I've been doing that a lot lately. And then practice either in rehearsal or on my own new songs for the show and go to a show and then get home around 2 a.m. Your schedule's wild. It is because you nap wow. during the day. You yeah. sleep with the importance of getting up in the morning. You really preface that before, like getting up in the yeah. morning. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of musicians who I feel don't take advantage of being a productive human being during the mornings. Um, they just, you know, they wake up understandably so, so late because we get off so late by the time you're home, blah, blah, blah. Maybe you wind down, you eat something. It's like 3, 4 a.m. That's craziness. And you can't go, get, get up at 6, 6 a.m. That's a nap, not a sleep. And um, for me, I've found that naps really help. But if I don't get up in that early in the morning or early ish, you know, reasonably, um, I'm not as sharp. And I feel like I'm being accosted by my day rather than me taking on the day it's taking on me. And I get really panic stricken. I, I get pretty bad anxiety over it. Actually. I feel like I'm, I'm not prepared. I'm not prepared. I feel like I'm just trying to catch up all the time. And, um, it makes me a bitch. Like I really get ma- nasty. I get nasty because I don't feel, I don't feel right. Like, and I need that organization. I need that structure, that routine to feel sharp and clear and prepared for everything that I have going on or else I kind of lose myself because if I don't have control, like call me a control freak, like so I'm fine with that. I am fine with that. Like, I like things, how it works best for me. Why wouldn't I, why wouldn't you? So if, if, uh, if it's, if it's in my power to make it the way that I want it to, then I will. Oh, that's, it's spectacular too, because it, it's okay to put yourself first. And I think that's yeah. a good takeaway from that. It just is, but you do a character, you do a character <laughs> that is my spirit animal. And, um, her name is Teresa. Tell me Teresa. About Teresa. Oh my gosh. Yes. So I've been doing Teresa kind of as like an icebreaker at bars, I'm like just a party trick uh, for years. Teresa is, uh, cause I'm from New Jersey. I, I grew up in New Jersey and there was a lot of like New Jersey housewife mob esque women around me growing up. And so Teresa wears like spandex leopard print and she's all about the jewels, the bling, the bling, she's got a fake tan and, um, you know, the girls have always pushed up real nice in a, in a, in a padded bra, whatever. Vincenzo! <laughs> yeah, she's an, an Italian New Jersey wife. I was like, but she, she's fun to do. She's really fun to do. And my uh, favorite. <laughs> I see so much of just like my mother, my mom's not even from New Jersey, but I just see so much of like the hand jet. I mean, I talk, this is my, yeah. hands, I talk with my hands, I move my body. Like I just, and, and the way you, you did a clip and I, and I spoke about this last time, but you did a clip and it was like, you know how the bra works. This is, you can't hear the padding. Soundproof. It's got, the padding's got to be big enough. It's soundproof with this baby bulletproof. <laughs> yeah, no, I've got, so honestly, I've been doing this for years. Like, like I, she's just in me now. It is a part, Teresa is a part of me. Um, it's, it's, it's fun. It's off the cuff, just kind of like improv humor, but it, it looks kind of weird when I go to like target to, to film a scene or something. People, no, people are looking at me. It's not weird at all. You live in Vegas. It's more than acceptable. For you, you know what? You're actually time. right. You're actually right. This is probably the only place where it's totally normal. Yeah. If you showed up to South Surrey in British Columbia and you went in to a Walmart, cause we don't it's have full Teresa. Yeah, just full Teresa. Actually, I'm going to force that on you when you come up to visit. I'm going to force you to, to go do a Teresa because I need to see it in person. I need to see it in my environment so I can watch everyone else's reactions. So yeah. I can pee myself. Oh my God. It's so funny. It's so, I definitely get a lot of looks. You have to, you have to be confident to commit to a character like that in public. Like you really have to just <laughs> put all kind of ego at the door. <laughs> you think? I, I'm going to link one of these to this episode because 
you, none of you listeners fully grasp <laughs> how legit Teresa is. She is the, she's the, you know, I was watching this, it'll tie in. I was watching a clip this morning. So my husband sent me this clip and it's um, Joey Diaz, you know, Joey Diaz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fuck, he's one of my favorite comedians of all time. I'm like, this guy, I need, I want to sit in a room with him one day just so I can just listen. Like I'm done, like, I get the accent as I'm talking. I just get so excited. He did this clip today and it was, it was exactly kind of what you were saying. Like, you know, it was like, get up, do your push ups. Like, who gives a fuck? Oh, like, I saw that too. I saw that too. I saw, I saw that a while ago. Oh my God, so funny. Yeah. Yeah. Who gives a fuck. Nobody yeah. gives a fuck about what no. you're doing. Yeah, that's, that's it. totally it. Yeah compromise yourself just like just exactly. on this popping off and it reminded me I said that's so funny that I watched it this morning and I was thinking about you and I was like that's perfect that's who you are to me you are this person who is like as much as you don't say it and you're not near as aggressive but like I don't give a fuck this is my life this is who I am this is how I work this is my work ethic this is where I'm going these are my goals these are this is how I'm gonna be and if you don't like it don't surround yourself with me find another mm -hmm. way find a place to get off. It's okay to design the life that you want for you. And I think that there is a certain sense of like unbridled independence that I've kind of created because of that feeling. There's a, there's this constant undercurrent of, I love doing my thing. I love doing my thing. If you're, if you're cool with it, cool. But like, I don't really owe anything to anybody you know, obviously my kindness and everything, but my time is so precious to me. If I'd rather be doing it, doing what I want, then I'm going to go do that. And so you're either, you're either on it or you're not. And, you know, it's funny to see because <laughs> this sounds terrible, especially in my dating life. There is a lot of people who, um, they know that they can't challenge that. They know that there's going to be, she's going to do what she wants, but there's something about there's something so tantalizing about somebody who doesn't need anything from anybody, not from you or anybody else that makes you just want to be by them. And so all of their, like what they need to do for themselves goes out the window and then they just, you know, dote on me all the time. So I can't, I don't know who could handle you woman. Nobody, nobody. No, my dad always says it. He's like, I don't know who you're going to end up with, but, uh, sure as shit. I don't know him. Like, 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 honestly, I'm a, t I'm really tough to be around because I'm no, just you're that, tough in a good way. Is that amazing. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you are no, but There's something it's, it's, contagious yeah. about your energy. There's something contagious about the way that you view life, the, the positive the, you radiate positivity in this uh -huh. way that affects individuals when they're around you. And that is something that well, I talk so much about, like, be the light in the room. Like when someone's having a shitty day, be aware of your energy. When you walk mm -hmm. into that room, how do you better people like that? Big fucking smile, give people hugs, let them know it's okay to smile. Let them know it's okay to have a hard day and still try to be better. You can wake up and have the worst fucking day of your life. But if you wake up, take a deep breath and go, okay, that's all right. It started off. It started off shitty, but I can progress. I can make it better. I can be better. Take that opportunity. And you're doing that just by being in the room. Thank you. And, but I go through that too. Like there's so many days where I don't want to go to work and my work is my dream. I'm just like feeling like shit. You know what I mean? I feel like bloated and tired. I'm like hungry. I don't want to do anything. And, but I have to. And for me, this, this, like, you got it. Like, I just act my way into it. Just act like you're that person. Lo and behold, 20 minutes later, like I am that person again. You know what I mean? You, there's little tricks you can do to fool yourself. And like, I'll leave you on this because I know you've got another podcast to do it. No worries, babe. Um, I got but, you. Um, but there, there's something to be said about not being a bitch. I don't care how, how famous I get or not famous, but like right now I'm on this big stage and people are always looking at me and it's, it's, it's amazing, you know? And there's so many people that, deserve to just be given the time of day to like, it's not rocket science. Like I'm just a, a you know, I'm just a regular person and it may, it means so much to them that I just like even go over there. Like I've met a couple of famous people, um, being in that room that are really nice. And some that really aren't like some, some of the people that I really admired as, as, as recording artists and, and dancers and everything are assholes. And now I hate them. 
And I'm like, why did you have to ruin that for me? Because what did it cost you to smile and just say thank you? You know what I mean? Why'd you gotta, why do you got to go be like that? So I, I will never be that person. I, you can always freaking talk to me. I'll be cool. I'll be grounded. Like, there's no reason you shouldn't just be a decent human being. You know what I mean? Right. It's it's just like a be a I better just, human. Yeah, I need one of those. Human. I need one of those. No, I'm, I'm serious though. Some of these people are really mean. Like why? Why? Because sometimes it takes it in people's eyes, in my opinion, it, it, it takes more effort to be kind. And I think it's because they've, they've either been told that they're so fucking incredible that they don't have to be kind to people. But I'll tell That's you right true. now, yeah. people remember, people never forget. They can think they forget, but they never forget. Trust me, no one yeah. ever forgets. And it's okay to take a second out of your day to t- say hi to someone because you don't know what that person's going through. You don't know how bad that person's day or life has been. You don't know if that smile or that second that you took to get off that stage and go say hi to that person, how much, not only would that impact their life, but give them happiness and peace moving forward in their day and allowing them to then take that and move it forward. It's that pay it forward method. And it's that idea that you're not the center of the world, but for that moment, you are that biggest person to someone. And you got to realize that you're a big deal to to a lot, a lot of people. And the fact that you see that for what it is, you acknowledge it and you, you're kind. It doesn't take extra energy. Fucking smile, people. It makes my day so much better. Like I like people. I genuinely like people. And I like getting to know all the people in the audience. Like, why wouldn't I? You know what I mean? I'm not going to just like go slink away. And be like, oh no, darling. Like after the show, all the grabs are after. Like I'm no, you know what I mean? So Silly. No one would judge you because honestly, I've seen you perform. I see the shows you've put on. They're impressive at, at the very least. Your voice thank is you. angelic as fuck. And oh, uh, I've tried to sing and I'll tell you right now, I'll never sing around you. I won't even try to mimic a tune. Like I'm not stupid. I know what's <laughs> no, up. no, you have something. I'm sure, I'm sure you got something. something nah, like nah, I'm just loud and obnoxious. Let's be honest with ourselves. <laughs> Listen, um, I'm so glad that we could get this done again. I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful. I really appreciate your time and your voice and the effort you put in for everyone here and just telling your story and the way that you are. Um, you're an example, you're a shining example of what hard work, dedication and calm, patience, loving, and just supportive humans should be like. So Thank you so, so much. Thank can you Kelsey. tell everyone where they can find you? Yeah. Um, on Kelsey's podcast next time. Oh. <laughs> um, but yeah, right now I'm singing at Delilah in Las Vegas and, um, I've got some social media stuff. It's, uh, just my name is Savannah links and uh, this the is website. And then my website. Yeah. My website is www.thesavannahlinks.com. Um, if you forget the, the B in it, you will be directed instantly to bimbosonly.com, a porn site, which oh, I am not on. I don't know. <laughs> what, I am not on that, but it, it will take, take you there. I had an audition recently where I had a, um, they asked for my information and I sent them just, I forgot, savannahlinks.com. They're like, uh, this is the wrong kind of audition for you, I think. I think, the, I think we're not doing the same thing. But uh, yeah, don't forget it. The savannahlinks.com. You can find uh, I mean, stuff. we won't forget it. I don't know if you need to be reminded before you send. Just give me uh, a prep for you. Hey, remember the porn site you sent? Let's not do that again. Exactly. It's fine. Exactly. It's fine. Yeah. Well, it's uh it's been a pleasure. This won't be the this won't be the only time. This won't be the second time. There'll be a third, a fourth, and a fifth. I'm sure I will hear plenty from your beautiful face. Yeah. Otherwise, human beings. Check you all next week.